Yo, what's up everyone? Eric Comics here with the Comic Collectors Guild, and today I'm going to be reviewing all the books from last week's new comic book day, so stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. I hope you're all staying safe out there. I hear things are getting crazy out on the east and west coast. Make sure you're washing your hands, stay up to date with what the CDC and your government wants you to do. They probably got the right idea right now, even though there's a little, there's a few conspiracies floating around out there. But just stay, uh, just stay inside and stay safe. Now, before I get started on any of these books, I finally picked one up. I'm so excited! I finally got it. I know a lot of you that have been following me, follow my Instagram, talk to me. You know I've wanted this issue for so long. I finally got it for a very, very reasonable price. ASM 300, first appearance and origin of Venom. I finally got it. So happy. It's awesome. Spent $135 on it. Couldn't believe it. The guy said he's rating it at like a 6. To be honest, I'd probably put it at like a 5. It's got some It's got some mean spine ticks going down the side. Uh, front and back, they are color breaking. The corners aren't completely crisp. And I don't know if there's water damage, but... Uh, you know, like I said, it's not the cleanest of copies. I'd probably put it at like a 5. does need to be clean and pressed, but either way, a 5 for $135, ASM 300. I didn't care. I'm happy I have it. I love it. So moving on. Don't forget, I also had that giveaway. I think this is going to be the last week. Mm, one more week. So I got one more week of the giveaway. Scarlet Witch, Vision, 1 through 12 in the limited series. Check it out. It's on my Instagram, AR Comics. Well, AR underscore comics. You know, you already follow it. So, let's get started on these books. To be honest, I felt like overall the books weren't too great this last week. I wasn't too excited for, I think, really any of them besides a couple. And overall, it just kind of was just a. I don't know. Overall, not the best week for books, in my opinion. Starting off, we have Iron Age 2020. I'm not going to get too in-depth of this one because it's not really an issue, I guess you can call it. Um, I think it's one of two. I think there's another tie-in of this. It's obviously part of the 2020 Iron Man run, and it's broken up into like three separate little issues. They weren't really all too special. I'm not going to talk about each individual one. Uh, the first two were a little bit long, and then the third one was just a few pages, not really a lot of words, but they considered it like a third story. And if you are keeping up, you have to read Machine Man tie-in number two before you read this because the first one has to deal with that. So, moving on. Next up, we have Guardians of the Galaxy number three. Another issue I wasn't too hype on. I haven't really been enjoying, honestly, really any of them. So far, I'm not really interested in the whole cosmic aspect of most of the Marvel books that get put out. And this one was no different, in my opinion. Uh, if you can remember, the last issue ended with Star-Lord pretty much sacrificing himself. And this whole issue was just everyone, I don't know, kind of dealing with what happened. Basically, the aftermath. Um, Rocket and everybody goes back to Gamora, basically tells her, and Gamora tells him, like, she wishes he was... I don't know if she wishes he was dead, but he said... Or she said that she wishes that, like, she doesn't want to see him anymore, doesn't want anything to do with Rocket... So he basically just went MIA for the rest of the issue. You got to see Drax and, I don't know, just a few other. Moon Moon Dragon was in there, and you just got to see the aftermath the whole time. But the issue ended on a very cool note. So the Guardians answered a call for, you know, a bounty pretty much. And then when they got there or got word of what the bounty was on, it was on Rocket Raccoon. So basically, some group wants the Guardians to kill Rocket. I don't know if they accepted it, but... Next issue might be pretty cool. Next up, we have Machine Man 2020, number two of two. It was okay. Nothing too special about it. Uh, I thought the first time was better. This whole issue basically pertained to Machine Man 2020 fighting this Machine Man, like the X-51, I think that's what it's called. But basically, old versus new, and Jocasta was there to fight as well. And that was the whole issue. They fought it over. Old Machine Man won and chopped off Jocasta's head and basically took her with. And now they have all of the, um, basically the Tony Stark's plans. 
So that's like that whole issue. It fits into the story pretty well. Overall, I didn't think these tie-ins were that great. But I do think that they're relatively important to the overall story. Next up, we have... Let's see. Family Tree number 5. So this was... I thought it was going to be the end of the issues... But it turns out, uh, I guess they're going to extend the arc or make a new arc. So there's going to be more issues. This one was pretty cool. I wouldn't say it was overall like, I don't know, like crazy good issue. But so I know if you uh, recall from the last issue, they were in New York. Meg and the grandfather, mom and brother were all kind of dealing with Meg turning into the tree. Went to that doctor who apparently knew what was going on. Grandfather sacrificed himself. And they made a run for it because that like weird cult group came that wanted to kill Meg. I guess turns out they probably should have killed Meg. I don't know. So she basically turned full tree. And she planted her roots into the ground at the very end of the issue. I don't know what I don't know what really happened from there, because it kind of like skipped years. But it basically because she was able to successfully turn into the tree and plant her roots into the earth, it basically ended the ended the I don't know, like, humanity, like, ended everything, so, I don't know, I'm interested to see where it goes, and, I don't know, Jeff Lemire, I'm really enjoying your story so far. Next up, we have four issues left, these were all, in my opinion, very okay issues, I didn't think any of them were all, um, like, wow, like, my, my top book of the week, to be honest, any of these books probably could have been my top book of the week, but one of them stood out a little bit more than the other one. One book I was extremely excited for. This may have even been my top uh, hyped up book of the week last week. Something's Killing the Children, number six. Brand new arc. I really enjoyed it. So Erica. Uh, so it's Erica, Tommy, and what's the other kid's name? I forgot. They have him right off in the beginning though. Uh, James. So we have Erica, Tommy, and James. They were in the tunnel and they... Killed the mom monster. All the babies got loose. That's how the last issue ended. This one picks up where James is in the hospital. I think he's in a coma. Tommy's trying to cope with like whatever happened. And Erica's still just being creepy and weird. And you know what she typically does. So all that's going on. Erica is still trying to figure out more info on how to fight these monsters. While everyone's still dealing with the aftermath of what they found in the cave. Which was all of, like, the dead kids. So, they found all the dead kids. Everyone's not happy about it, but Erica's just, she's doing her thing. So, other than that, then they show where uh, her family stays in Chicago. And it's like House of Slaughter. They're super weird as well. And I guess they're coming to get Erica now. Or finish off the monster problem themselves. So, new arc, new issue. Beautiful cover. I'm excited for it. I think it's only going to get better. And I don't know. Probably one of my better series that I'm reading right now. Another one. I'm not. Uh, this is pretty good I guess. Spider Woman number one. I don't think a lot of people were pre-ordering it. Or hyped up about it. Or really talking about it. The only thing I have been seeing is that everyone's hyped up for Comic Tom's variant. So if you haven't seen that go check it out. But overall the issue was alright. It, it was surprisingly better than I thought it would be. I honestly thought it would kind of be more towards the top of my pile of uh, not as good issues. But not bad. So you got to see Jessica Drew. She starts off the issue. She's not feeling too well. She's a little sick. But she's got this job on a big old yacht. She's got to protect some pharmaceutical kid's daughter during a birthday party. She's basically there for security. But obviously it's not going to go according to plan. Bad guys come in. They want to kidnap the daughter. Spider-Woman, you know, she does her thing, beats up everybody, saves the day. That's how it always goes. But at the end of the issue, you saw her kind of fall over and she's puking up some green stuff and she's very sick. So you kind of saw it throughout the issue where she said she wasn't feeling well and like she's a little sick. But the way that the issue ended, it kind of not that she's dead, but here, just take a look at that. You can be your own judge. So she looks dead. She's puking up some green stuff. She's a little sick. We're going to go from there. And then they have a few other pages. I haven't really talked about that um, earlier, but there's a few other pages at the very end that kind of show her get this new costume. Nothing crazy. Not a bad issue. I'm going to get the next one. 
It's pretty cool. Next up, we have Marvel's X number three with that Alex Ross cover. I was super excited for this. I thought it was very good. Um, but, it, yeah, you know, it wasn't as good as I wished it would have been. Each issue kind of just kept bringing on something new. Like, the first issue was, um, I don't know, everything broke out. Everyone got this virus and sick, but then they mutated and got these powers. Second issue, the... He finally made it. What, what's his name? It's not with a D. Dylan, Danny, Daniel. I'm pretty sure it's Daniel. So Daniel, I'm just going to keep calling him that until I can figure it out. David. Well, either way. No, it was with a D, though. So David, in issue two, makes his way to New York, meets up with Spider-Man, Daredevil, and he's, like, ecstatic. He finally meets these superheroes. And you kind of think, like, oh, man, everything's, like, still wrong but now the superheroes are introduced so you had more to look forward to and this issue i don't know the way that i described it to somebody else it just felt like it felt like a video game quest it's like here they are now they have to do this and now they have to do this and now they have to do this but then it all leads back to maybe doing this that's just how it felt it wasn't bad it just it's kind of annoying it's like they went so they started off at the regular place then they realized that David might be the one to save the world, so he took him to the Baxter building. Well, there's a force field around the Baxter building, so they had to get in. Once they got in, um, the security system basically kicked them back out. And from there, that whoever was in there, or then they went to see Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange said, you got to find the Invisible Woman, because the Invisible Woman can get you in the Baxter, uh, the Baxter building. So I was like, all this stuff just casually happening, and it's like... Uh, and it's like each page was like a brand new quest. I don't know. It wasn't bad, but a little annoying. But the cool part was, was after they met with Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, or Daredevil went off and did his thing. Spider-Man was, I guess, walking David home or whatever was going on. And some lion came out of nowhere, attacked Spider-Man, kidnapped David, took David back to his place and showed him that he basically had Captain America's head mounted on like a trophy. And you kind of, I kind of thought about it, and I was like, that reminds me of something. But it didn't really click in my head. So that line that mutated, Spider-Man put his two cents together, because he's smarter than I am. And he realized that it's Kraven the Hunter. So it was so cool. to like That was like the big wow factor at the very end, which is why it's at the top. One of my top books of the week. I was like, man, they got, they got Kraven the Hunter in here now. That's pretty cool. So let's see if I can get a quick... So this is what he's going to look like. On that one of those last pages. Not bad, not bad at all. I enjoyed it. But I think that's the whole reason I really like that issue is because they just introduced Craven the Hunter as like this mutated lion with some venom power claws or something. I don't know. But it was cool. So very unexpected for me though, but my top issue of the week. I'm a little surprised. Mighty Morphing, Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number four. It was pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. It was like the other issues where it was a bunch of fighting. Beautiful artwork. It's so colorful. I know I showed it off in my last video, but just so much color. It's awesome. So what happened was in this issue, which kind of made it at the top of my list, was, you know, the Power Rangers went and did their thing. They had to save. I'm going to be honest. I don't know the Power Rangers' names, but I'm pretty sure the Green Ranger's name is Tommy. Maybe. So they went to save him. And when they got there, Shredder showed up with the... He was already morphed. He was already morphed into the Green Ranger. Whooped up on all of them, but used... Whatever he used on Tommy, I guess, um, basically made it so that they couldn't morph anymore either. So, fast forward throughout the issue. Um, you finally got to see, like, that crossover. So, since they couldn't use the morphers anymore, the Turtles were like, well, we could probably use them. So we got some like mighty morphin turtles and then the Power Rangers like got dressed up in some, like some ninja outfits. So you got the, the Power Ninjas or whatever you want to call them. It was really cool to see that. And then you got to see the new Power Ranger turtles uh, go up in their big old get up. The, I don't even know what that's called. See, my, my knowledge on the Power Rangers just isn't there like it used to be. That big old... That big old machine at the very end. Mega Megazord? Or Mega I don't know, Megazord. I think that's what it's called. 
But that was it. And then you got to see the turtles driving that at the very end, the whoop up on some bad guys. Very exciting. I'm not sure if anyone else is even reading it or keeping up with the other Power Ranger issues, but if you guys are keeping up with uh, Saban's Go Go Power Rangers or the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, please let me know how that is because I might have to pick them all up. But either way, these were all my books. This is my top issue of the week. This is my top pickup of I don't know how long because no matter what I pick up, nothing's probably going to top this unless if a 9.8 sign falls on my lap, but I don't foresee that happening at all. Either way, I love it. These books were okay, but this is great. So those are all my issues. What books did you pick up this last week, if you were even able to? I think this is going to be my last week of picking up books. My shop says they're open on Wednesday, but I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see on that one. So let me know down low in the comments what books you picked up, which ones you're excited to see for this week coming out, and let me know. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and all that good stuff. And with that, have a good night.